Welcome to Grace and Truth for today. I'm your host, Pastor Pete, uh, here at the Cleveland Baptist Church. And thanks again for uh, taking a few minutes uh, here at the beginning of your day or whenever it is that you're uh, tuning into this uh, to uh, study the Word of God with us. And uh, I hope this has been a help to you. It's been a help to me in studying and preparing uh, for it. Uh, we are, of course, continuing our journey uh, through the life of Joseph, one of, uh, I would say, probably my favorite Bible character, at least my favorite Old Testament character. And uh, we are now in the 39th chapter, and uh, Joseph, of course, has been sold into slavery, and um, shortly thereafter, he's purchased by a man by the name of Potiphar, uh, or at least with that title, and he goes down to Potiphar's house, he begins to serve, he serves well, uh, but uh Potiphar's wife, the Bible says, cast her eyes upon him and began to lust after him and began to try to tempt him. And of course, Joseph uh, maintains his integrity, but Potiphar's wife lies about him. And uh, Joseph finds himself in prison. And uh, we read a couple of verses about Joseph's period in prison. The Bible says in verse number 21, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. If I were to give a title to uh, today's um, thought, uh, it would be this, the inmate was running the asylum the inmate was running the asylum. After being in prison a short time, it, it became obvious to the jailer that Joseph was different. Um, he realized this, this young man does not belong in this prison with uh, these other wrongdoers. Uh, simply put, Joseph hadn't done anything wrong. He had been lied about by Potiphar's wife. And it wasn't long after that that the jailer had begun to commit great responsibility to Joseph's hand, even though Joseph was a prisoner like the others. This got me to thinking, you know, sometimes all of us, I suppose, we use the excuse of our position to justify why we aren't leading. Uh, I worked with teenagers for a lot of years, and and I know there were there were some teenagers that had this, this, this idea that, you know, well, I, I can't really do anything for the Lord because I'm just a teenager. Perhaps sometimes that's how children are as well. I'm just a kid. What can I, what can I do? How can I really serve the Lord? The truth of the matter is, is if you and I buy that line of reasoning as just uh, children or teenagers, many times we'll hold on to that even when we become adults, and we'll we'll find some other reason that keeps us from serving the Lord the way that we ought to, it keeps us from leading in whatever position or place that we find ourselves in. And I, I would say to you that Joseph's life reveals that one can lead regardless of the position so long as the following things are present and true in their lives. And there's really two of these things. Number one, the power of God. The power of God, I would say, elevates any individual. The Bible says that the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him, speaking of Joseph, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Now, what was it about Joseph that stood out? What, what made him different? Was it his, his intelligence, his intellect? Was it his good looks? Uh, was it his uh, physical strength? No, the truth of the matter is Joseph had uh, what we might refer to as a Midas touch. And, of course, you might be familiar with that story of King Midas and everything that he touched turning to gold. In some respects, Joseph had that type of touch because, well, because the power of God's presence rested upon him. Uh, this got me to thinking, this jailer, this man who, uh, who we don't know his name, uh, we don't know much about him other than that he was the keeper of the prison, but this man likely had never met an individual who knew the true God until Joseph came along. Now think about that for a moment. There's a good chance that this jailer had never met someone uh, that, that knew the Lord and that had uh, this type of character and this type of integrity. So it is no wonder Joseph stood out the way that he did. He'd never seen anybody like this. He'd never met any like, one like this before. You know, God's power and his presence were unmistakable in Joseph's life. 
You know, I thought to myself as I was preparing for this, most Christians, most of us, I include myself in this, we lack God's power in our lives simply because we are not willing to pay the price that is necessary to enjoy it. I remind you of um, the book of Second Chronicles and in the seventh chapter and the 14th verse, uh, we find Solomon praying a prayer at the dedication of the temple. And, um, and, and, and he says this, that really this is God's word uh, to, to Solomon. And uh, after this, this dedication, this prayer, and, and God says this, he says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways... So what is necessary for, for God to hear from us, for God's power and his presence to dwell upon us? Well, the Bible says that, first of all, we must be his people, and then we must humble ourselves. Oh, well, that's a hard thing to do. Uh, pride is, is naturally a part of who we are. It, uh, it encompasses every aspect of our being. And so we must humble ourselves. Then we must pray. Uh, prayer is a lot of work. Uh, prayer is hard. A prayer can be challenging, it can be difficult, staying, staying focused and staying consistent. Then he says this, if they humble themselves, pray, and if they seek my face, to follow after God, to pursue him. Then he says this, and turn from their wicked ways. Are these elements present in your life? Uh, if they're not, then it's hard for me to imagine that the power of God might rest upon us uh, without... Uh, humbling ourselves, without praying, without seeking God's face, and without turning from our wicked ways. Uh, again, these things are necessary for us to enjoy God's power, for us to enjoy His favor and His presence uh, in our lives and in our nation and in our, in our land. And yet, I believe that Joseph lived this kind of life, and because of that, the power of God elevated him. Even though he was an inmate, uh, even though he was a prisoner, uh, because there was something different about him. It elevated him to a position of leadership and influence. And then I would say this, secondly, that Joseph was elevated uh, as an inmate. He was able to run the asylum because the power of God elevates an individual. But I would say this, that personal responsibility also elevates an individual. Verse 22, the Bible says, The keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Joseph was so sharp and impressive that uh, the keeper could completely trust him, even with his own responsibilities. He just handed them over to him and said, they're all yours. Didn't even bother to look after the things that were, Joseph's responsi- or that were his responsibility because he knew Joseph would take care of them. You know, this accountability and responsibility is lacking in our generation. I believe, I truly believe that if an individual will show these qualities, the following qualities, he can enjoy promotion and advancement from any level. You say, I'm just a teenager. I'm just a kid. I'm just a, you know, I'm just a janitor. I'm just a, you know, working in a restaurant or serving in retail or just, I'm just a bus worker. I'm just a choir member. And yet, if you'll, if you'll show these, these qualities and these uh, elements of personal responsibility and accountability, I think that you can enjoy promotion and advancement from any level. Let, let me give them to you. First of all, I'd say this. Be respectful and courteous. Be respectful and courteous. Be kind. Um, defer to, uh, to others. Don't constantly clamor for your rights. Uh, as an individual, but just be respectful and courteous. Then I would say this, be punctual, be on time. Uh, if you say you're going to be somewhere at a certain time, be there and uh, do everything. And if you're running late for some reason, maybe beyond your power control, communicate with whoever is going to be waiting for you. Nothing worse than sitting around waiting for someone who's scheduled an appointment with you and they don't show up. Be punctual. Then I would say this, take ownership of your mistakes. Listen, the bottom line is we're no matter how much of a person of character integrity you are, you are going to make a mistake because you're a human being, and so am I. And so when you do, take ownership of it. I'm sorry, that was wrong. I did not handle that the right way. Boy, I've, I've had to do that more often than I care to admit. Take ownership of your mistakes. Work hard. And when you go to work, when you're on the clock, so to speak, work hard. Do your job to the best of your ability. Don't just work hard when the boss is around, when the supervisor comes by, 
But work hard all the time and expect that if you do, you will be elevated. You will enjoy a position of, of, of influence. Then I would say this, do right. Do right. Joseph did right. Uh, that's why he ended up in prison, but that didn't keep him, didn't stop him from doing right. Even in prison, he did the right thing. Do right all the time. And then I would say this, guard your tongue. I think we, we sometimes get ourselves in more trouble because of what comes out of our mouth than just about any other thing. Guard your tongue. The book of James talks a lot about that. It talks about how dangerous our tongues can be and how much trouble we can get ourselves in. What we see here in Joseph's life, he is an inmate, but yet he's running the asylum. Why? Because the power of God elevates an individual. It certainly does. And Joseph had God's power and his presence in his life. And also because personal responsibility elevates an individual. I remember, I've told this story many times, but I remember going to interview for a job uh, years and years ago. I was just a kid work, wanting to work at a fast food restaurant. Somebody had taught me in the Christian school here at Heritage Christian School that when you go for an interview, you should wear a shirt and tie. Well, I just assumed that carried over to fast food restaurants, and I wore a shirt and tie. I remember sitting down with the manager. The first question he asked me was not what my strengths were, what my weaknesses were, uh, what my grades were. He looked at me, and he said, when can you start? He later told me, he said, I'd never seen anybody come to an interview at this particular restaurant dressed in a, suit or in a shirt and tie, and I just didn't know any better. I'm just simply saying that ele- elevation can come to any individual if he has the power of God upon him and he takes personal responsibility and accountability for his life. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the example of Joseph. Lord, would you help us in the lives that you've given us to live, to live similarly, to take responsibility and accountability for our actions, our choices, our decisions, and and Lord, to, um, to do what is necessary so that the power of God and his presence can rest upon us. Bless us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks again to tuning in to Grace and Truth for today. Hope it's been a blessing to you. Uh, let me encourage you to leave us a, a rating and a review, and uh, also to subscribe to us if you're uh, subscribe or if you're uh, accessing this through Apple Podcasts or some other uh, podcast source. Of course, if you're accessing it uh, through social media or through YouTube, share it with others. And again, we hope it's been a blessing to you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, God bless. Have a great day.